What's up everyone? This is Lewis aka Peralta Beats on behalf of Splice. Today we're going to be taking a look at how easy it is to create a new sample instrument in Logic 10.5 using melodic samples you find in Splice. This is really cool because it's going to allow us to create some unique sounds that we can use in our productions immediately. We're going to begin by taking a look at how we find samples. From there we'll take a look at how we bring them into Sampler and how we tweak and shape our new instrument. We'll review how to save it, and lastly, we'll take a look at how I use this new instrument in the track. Alright, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's begin by looking for pitch samples on the Splice app. I already have it open, and I have a Logic Pro session open in the background. In the Splice app, I have sounds I've already downloaded. We're going to look for samples that have a pitch. On the left side panel, we can navigate to samples, followed by instruments down below. Here we have a menu of samples with related sounds. We're going to check out strings. Let's audition a few. We're going to use this sample because the notes here have a nice length and it's monophonic. It does sound processed, which could have an impact on the results of our sampling when it spreads it across the keyboard. We shall see. If you're aiming for a clean sounding sampler instrument, an unprocessed monophonic sample will give you the best result. With that said, know that there are several ways of going about making a sampler instrument. We're only going to focus on the fastest way to achieve making an instrument. I have a Logic Pro session open in the background. I also have a sampler instrument instantiated on a new track and the sampler window is open as well, which is key to this workflow. I'm going to drag the sample into sampler. There are several options. As we begin to drag the sample over the sampler interface, we are given two initial options, chromatic on the left and optimize on the right. We're going to focus on optimize because it's the fastest path towards the creation of a new instrument. As we drag over Optimize, we are then faced with two sub-options, Zone Per File and Zone Per Note. I'm going to opt for Zone Per File since I'm only bringing in one file. This one file, which has multiple notes, will then be mapped across the keyboard. From there, we will begin to tweak. We'll zero in on a note from this melodic sample. My goal is to make an instrument around one of these notes. This is a great option when you're in a situation where you have a sample you really like and you want to be able to create around it but don't have access to the original instrument. Basically, it would allow you to have more notes to play with, allowing you to make more musical decisions so you're not just stuck with a loop. We're going to proceed with dropping the sample into zone per file. Immediately, we see it's been mapped out across the keyboard. This big yellow block gives us that visual cue. It also represents the velocity range, which we can manipulate by clicking and dragging from the bottom or the top. This allows us to bring in other samples in which can be engaged based on how hard or soft you hit the keys. A practical use would be to engage samples of an instrument capable of various articulations, such as the case with stringed instruments. This one sample we're using has multiple notes. As you can tell in the lower register, it plays back really slow, and in the upper register, it plays back really fast. We can begin to shape this by taking a look at some of the parameters on the lower portion of the zone panel. We're going to click on the flex button, which allows us to play back all notes at the same speed of the original sample. This will lend itself for playing chords. Let's take a look at sample start and sample end to zero in on a note. We can drag the front and end handles to zero in. I have a selection which when I press a key, we can hear it's looping and clipping. To disable the loop, we're going to navigate to Mode. Instead of Forward, we're going to select No Loop. Next, we'll address the clipping by dragging the endpoint. We can further finesse this by using a fade, either by entering a numeric value or by dragging the handle on the top right of the waveform. We can further tweak our sample with the synth parameters, pitch, filter, and amp. We can also tweak using our modulators the envelopes, which gives us access to attack, decay, sustain, release, and the LFO. Some of these parameters you may want to adjust within the context of a mix. There are two filters. Each filter has a power button. If you're working with both filters, you have a button here that allows you to have filters in series or parallel. If parallel is selected, you have a blend knob option to favor one or the other. 
there is also a drop down menu with a variety of filters. Beyond this, I like using audio effects to further tweak and enhance my instrument. To save this instrument for use in other projects, in Sampler's drop down menu, we'll go to Save As. We'll give it a name. And make sure to check Save with Audio Data and save. To save the channel strip setting with your instrument and effects, in the channel strip, click on setting, save channel strip setting, give it a name, and save. Now let's take a look at how I use this instrument in a track. Okay, so there you have it. So as you can see, it's really simple to get started with making your own sample instrument. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Be on the lookout for some more Logic Pro 10 tutorials just like this. So make sure you subscribe. Big shout out to Splice for having me. This is Lewis for Alta Beats. Peace.